Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be showing you how to use our new pusher plugin transitions to create something awesome that looks like this. These zoom and spin motion transitions take the zoom blur style, popularized by filmmakers like Sam Colder, and puts it into a drag and drop solution for your footage and titles. And we're going to give you some tips so that you can get the most out of them. So let's jump into it. Okay, here we are in Premiere Pro, and we're going to be showing you how to use these pusher transitions to make some awesome video content. If you don't know how to download and install these plugins, we've actually got a video all about that, and I'll make sure to link it in case you need to check it out. But in this video, what I want to do is not only show you how to use and customize these transitions, but also give you three tips to get the most out of this in and out style transition to create incredible montages. The concepts are great to keep in mind for a variety of different styles and situations. But first, let's actually go through how to use and customize them. To find these transitions once they've been installed is pretty simple. Just go to your effects panel and search for Pusher. And you should see a folder called MA Pusher underneath Video Transitions. Now all you have to do is drag and drop one at the beginning or end of your footage, or in between clips, and voila! You've got a stellar transition with no work. And these transitions come in four distinct styles. Spin in, spin out, zoom in, and zoom out. But you'll probably actually want to know how to customize these to truly make them your own. To dive into these settings, all you need to do is highlight your transition in question, and then go up to Effect Controls. Here you can see that there's a list of different settings that you can play with, and they're almost identical for all four options. Anchor, Scale, Repeat Tile, Motion Blur, and Motion Blur Amount. Anchor allows you to control the central point of the transition to either off-center it or make it more central. This doesn't change the image position, but instead the direction of the zoom or spinning motion. The scale parameter will help you to change the theoretical distance traveled along the z-axis. Basically, how much do you zoom in or out of the image? Decreasing this amount will cause a very little amount of zooming to occur while raising this amount will make it look like you're zooming in really fast, really far. Repeat Tile controls how much space around the original footage is reflected or mirrored during the transition. While moving in and out, the edge of the frame would normally be visible, and if I turn these down, you can kind of see what I mean. But leaving the amount at 1500 or greater will ensure that there's never dead space around a piece of footage during the transition. Motion Blur is pretty simple, it's just a binary switch that allows you to say whether or not you want Motion Blur to be visible during the transition. And finally, Motion Blur Amount controls how much Motion Blur is actually present and how intense it looks during the course of the transition. This will only display changes when the Motion Blur binary setting is set to on. And finally, for the Spin In and Out versions, there's one additional parameter called Angle. Angle controls how much rotation actually occurs during the course of the transition. So, for this spin transition, if you set the angle to zero, there's actually no spin and it just acts like a zoom in or zoom out. And like all drag and drop transitions, changing up the duration is as simple as hovering over the edge on your timeline and clicking and dragging it to adjust. But once you get the basics down, we want to make sure that you feel like you can use them to their greatest potential. So that's why our first tip is to use them to merge wide and close-up shots of the same footage. This isn't so much about the transition as it is using it as a way to frame your larger story. But either way, it looks really cool when done correctly. All you have to do is place down two shots that appear to be the same event or location, but just at different distances. One wider and one more close-up. And with them back to back, using either the zoom in or zoom out variations will make it literally look like you're zooming in to get a closer look, or zooming out to gain perspective. This makes it look like you planned out the filming in advance like a boss. It makes your shots feel like they had a purpose and might even get a few people to say, whoa, how did they do that? But to make it super clear, let me walk you through a quick example. Here in these sets of shots, we have two different angles of an artist at work. If we just drop in the zoom transition, it's cool, but it's definitely not looking like we're really zooming into the subject to get a closer look. But what happens if we change up the zoom so that it aims at this area here? First, I'm going to drop my playback resolution so I can get a quicker response from the changes. 
And I'm also going to decrease the time of the transition so that it's a little bit more aggressive. Then, let's bring the playhead so that it hovers halfway through the transition, and now we're going to try to match up the positioning of these two clips. In this case, the artist's hand is a great point to focus on, because we're actually wanting to zoom in towards the canvas. Now let's line it up with the anchor parameter so that halfway through, the two hands from the two different shots are as close to each other as possible. It'll take some tweaking and some trial and error, but now that I think we've got it, we can reset our playback now to full resolution, and render out our playback. And now we can see that our transition looks way more like we're actually zooming into this area here. Cool, right? But you don't have to use them only on footage, you can also use them for titles, to give them a little bit of extra life. When it comes to adding text to video, there's a lot of different methods and styles and school of thought to what makes them look good. But two basic ideas come down to either making your text blend in, like it's a part of the world, or making it stand out. Creating a text layer and using these transitions on your text alone will help you to make them feel like they're a unique element separate from your video. And bonus points if you add a Gaussian blur beneath it onto your background video to further create this idea of separation. It doesn't take a lot to really make your text pop. But the opposite is possible too. By matching the transition you want to occur to your text, to also happen at the same time and at the same speed on your video, can make it appear like your text is a part of the world of your video. And by offsetting them by just a hair, you can give it a feel as if the whole event was artistically coordinated by having the text start to move just a little bit earlier or later. And lastly, our final tip to using these transitions effectively is kind of counterintuitive. It's to use them sparingly. But why? Well, it comes from the simple idea that the more you see something, the less special it is. If you've ever had a favorite dessert before, you probably know that it's possible to have so much of it that you start to not want it anymore. At least not at that moment. These transitions are great for a lot of situations, but a great way to start making something look boring is to use the same thing over and over and over again until it becomes predictable. Space out when you use them, or find unique and creative ways to incorporate them so that they at least feel different. And a great way to add some variety to your transitions is to simply use some of our other plugin transitions that we have. If you already have our pusher transitions here, then you'll already have access to everything else as well, no strings attached. So feel free to download all of them and check them out for yourself. And if you're on a free subscription at the moment, you'll have a red X over top of them, but you'll still be able to download them and test them out to see if you really actually like them. But guys, that's it for me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and click the bell icon to never miss when we post. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.